Management of Dental Trauma in the Emergency Department by Hans Rosenberg. So, why teach emergency physicians about dental trauma? Well, dental trauma is commonly seen in the emergency department. For example, in 2012, there were 58,000 visits for oral problems to Ontario emergency departments, and public health reports one in five Ontarians do not see a dentist because they cannot afford it. In Ottawa alone, there were 1,740 visits to the emergency department in 2014, an increase of over 50% in the last 10 years. However, medical school and emergency medicine residency programs unfortunately do not provide a lot of medical education when it comes to dental trauma and dental anatomy. In this three-part series, we hope to provide the emergency department practitioner with basic knowledge to assess and manage dental fractures, dental luxations, avulsions, and a general better understanding of dental anatomy. So today's video will be a review of dental anatomy. First, we're going to start with the tooth itself. The tooth itself is comprised of a crown and the area below the gingiva called the root. The crown consists of three layers, the extremely hard enamel, which is the outermost layer with its characteristic white and pearly appearance. Immediately deep to the enamel is the dentin. The dentin, although it appears blue in this uh, drawing, is actually a uh, yellowed colored. And finally, there is the pulp, which contains a neurovascular bundle uh, of the entire tooth. The neurovascular bundle continues into the root, which is surrounded by cementum, and is attached to the alveolar bone by the periodontal ligament, which plays a vital role in the viability of the tooth, and especially in dental avulsions, which we will talk about in detail in a later video. In regards to the dental nomenclature, first we're going to start uh, with names of the actual teeth themselves. There are 32 permanent teeth, with each quadrant made up of a central incisor, a lateral incisor, a canine, two premolars, and three molars, with the third molar commonly known as the wisdom tooth. There are numerous systems for dental nomenclature. However, I suggest the simplified approach of naming the teeth by their quadrant location and type of tooth. So let's practice with the way we would see it on a patient. First, we would describe this as the left upper quadrant, or you could say the left maxillary quadrant. And then this would be your central incisor, your lateral incisor, your canine, first premolar, second premolar, first molar, and second molar with the wisdom tooth not being visible. Now, whether that's because it's been extracted or not is hard to know in this image. So if we wanted to discuss this tooth with a dentist or some, you know, a, a fellow health practitioner, we would say that the patient had an injury that occurred to their left upper or their left maxillary central incisor. That way, everybody would know what tooth you're talking about and you don't have to necessarily know which uh, nomenclature system they are using and makes it easier for everybody to understand what you are talking about. So that is the end of this video with a dental anatomy review. Please uh, take a look at the next few videos that are also found on this page. Thank you.